Hello and good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are and what time of the day you are watching this video. How are you doing? My name is Amanda Iemi and I am a psychotherapist practicing in Lagos and working at my own private practice called Indidi. And I'm currently collaborating with Mido Hall Foundation to provide these short, helpful videos to educate you, an educator, about your mental health. Now, the last video I did was helping you, helping you to understand what mental health is. Now, what this video is going to be about is about educator burnout and stress. And if you have at any point in time felt like you didn't enjoy your job anymore, you wanted to quit, you were tired of school, the kids were being extra annoying, you felt very disconnected from what you're doing, chances are that you were experiencing a burnout. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let me break it down for you how we're going to go. First, we're going to know what exactly burnout means and what educator burnout is. Then what are the symptoms? And it'd be good for you at this point in time to sit with a pen and paper. So if you find anything here that you resonate with, you can take it out. Then we're going to talk about what causes it and how you can take care of yourself and how even the school system can help the educators take care of themselves. So now first, let's get into it. What is educator burnout? Now, according to Psychology Today, which is a magazine that talks about psychology themed topics, um, they describe a burnout as a state of chronic stress. By chronic, it means it's long term. Chronic stress that leads to physical and emotional exhaustion, cynicism and detachment and feelings of ineffectiveness and a sense of a lack of accomplishment. So it's like you're so stressed out that you have physical symptoms, you're tired emotionally, you start to experience cynical thoughts, you feel detached from the things that you're doing, you have feelings of ineffectiveness, like you're not doing your job really well, and then you also lack a sense of accomplishment. Now, what are some of the symptoms of a person who has um, educator burnout? Fatigue and sleep issues. You find it very difficult to stay awake and do your job well, and you don't even get enough sleep or your quality of sleep is really low. The second thing is you have repeated periods of forgetfulness and intense trouble concentrating. So you're forgetting things that you normally wouldn't forget, and then even trying to focus your attention on your work is actually exhausting. Then you start to lose your appetite. You don't feel like eating as much as you used to, or you're eating more, and you're eating more unhealthy stuff. And then you start to lose weight, or you start to gain weight at a significant um, rate. And the next thing that follows are feelings of depression and anxiety. So immense, continuous feelings of sadness, persistent feelings of sadness, and then a sense of anxiety around going to do your job or getting the job done. Now, what are some of the things that can cause um, an educator like you to have burnout? Number one is a lack of autonomy. When you're not able to make choices in the way you work and how your work flows, it can make you become stressed and exhausted. The second thing is the student behavior. If you work with students that are disrespectful, don't pay attention, are not able to socialize properly, no matter how much effort you put into it, it's going to make you feel exhausted. Lack of support from the administration. If you feel like you're alone at work and the administration is not supporting you in the way that you need help, that's going to make you burn out. And a frenzied environment where you're running from one role to another, one duty to another, you're managing the gym and at the same time you have to do PHE and also provide assistance to the physics teacher, you're doing way too much. It can make you exhausted. Another thing that can do that is poor relationships amongst the teachers and then poor communication between the parents and the administration and the teacher. So when the communication gap is, um, sorry, communication flow is not smooth, it can stress the teacher out and the teacher would not even have enough space to communicate what they need to say. There can also be a lack of a proper financial budget to buy the appropriate materials that you need to do your work and even a lack of time for the lessons that you have to give every day. So now how is it that we can treat burnout? Now if you recognize that some of the symptoms I mentioned earlier, you're experiencing them, what you need to do is take a break. It's important to take a break. If you have leave off of work, go on ahead and take a break. Now, teachers need to have more control over their daily lives, and this is for the administration. You need to be able to enable the teacher, empower them to be able to do what they're supposed to do and give them enough space to make choices about what they teach and how they're going to pass out their lessons. Another thing to do is to help the teachers modify their reaction. When you start to recognize that they're getting overwhelmed, they're tired and work is getting crazy, provide them with the resources that they can be able to make the right choices and also create access to care. And the kind of care that a teacher would need at this point is active rest and then also um, maybe mental health care, you know, get a therapist or a counselor in the school that will be able to support the teachers. 
The next thing is that you can look for the early signs of um, a burnout. So it could be you burning out or a colleague of yours or maybe a group of teachers that you're managing. The moment you know what the symptoms are, you can be able to look at what you can then do, okay, this person is experiencing a burnout, how can we help them? So look out for the early signs of a burnout happening and then nip it at the bud. Another thing is also offer mental and physical health amenities to your staff. Gym memberships can help. Having a therapist in school can help. A guidance counselor, a support group for them. If they have this, they don't have to spend so much of their money, number one, and number two, they can easily access care. And then the final thing is to create a clear path for addressing the symptoms of burnout. Don't just chuck the teachers over to, oh, you can take care of yourself, you should figure it out, go and speak to your doctor. No, let them know. If I'm feeling a burnout, what exactly am I supposed to do? Who do I speak to? Do I go to my supervisor, get a permission slip, get referred to a therapist, take and be given time, I'm off of work. What are the steps that follow when you notice that your staff is having burnout so they don't feel helpless and they feel like they can't really do anything about it. So that's the tip that I have for today. It's not really a tip, just like a short video topic talk <laughs> about educator burnout. Please feel free to read more about it because this information can be very helpful and beneficial to you as an educator. Take really good care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.